my name is uh, Ladislav Bartos. Um, I'm currently product director, CPO at uh, a, a, um, a startup company, uh, which is in education sector. But in terms of my background, I used to work at eBay, I used to work at O2, um, uh, different startups, big data startup, and uh, also some other international startups. Uh, um, um, what you need to know is that um, I am actually a software developer. Actually, I started as a software developer who moved into product management very quickly. And um, um, currently, I'm doing my MBA just to be a better business person, not just you know understand technology and uh, and the product and and the customers, but I would like to learn more about. Uh, uh, how to run the business, finance, how to set up a company. That's why I decided recently to take MBA. Um, I would say um, the sparker in the 70 years old lady uh, when she learned how to send an email herself. Uh, that's what uh, uh, makes me move and makes me motivated. Uh, that's what inspires me. And actually the sparker you can see day, every day. Uh, uh, for example, uh, when you hit your target and your manager is you no know, happy, or uh, when uh, your colleagues uh, launch a product and uh, and uh, from the the statistics you learn that that uh, the users love it and and uh, it actually had more impact on the business than uh, than we expected. Uh, or when I come home, you know, and my my son is running against me and uh, she he's happy that I'm at home. Uh, that that motivates me. I think it's 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 about uh, making a positive impact on other people's life, and and see that uh, even you don't even expect them to say anything, but uh, you know a smile, a a um, spark in the eye can can tell everything, and uh, that's what's uh, make me move. Uh, that's what motivates me the most. Yeah. So um, in terms of not winning, um, well, I mean you never can be right. And that's what I learned. That uh, uh, you can you can you know, work really hard, uh, but uh, you cannot never be sure. Um, for example, uh, you might think that a feature is going to be successful, but you learn that it's not when you launch it. Uh, but what I learned, actually, there is a, a my favorite quote is is that uh, um, I may I learned so much from my mistakes. I plan to do more. So uh, my my goal is that uh, whenever I'm not right, I try to figure out why I wasn't right. Or why we were not right, and uh, and learn from it, and not to make the same mistake again, and just to figure out uh, how can we avoid uh, this again. Uh, maybe we need more information. Maybe we need to test something, uh, test um, our assumptions. Uh, uh, but uh, I'm not afraid of making mistakes because this is what uh, shapes you. This is what shapes the company. And if you look at uh, the most success successful companies, made a lot of mistakes uh, before they got where they uh, they get where they are now. And um, if you want to be successful, you have to keep going. Otherwise, uh, you are not going to be, you know, make it uh, work. And um, if you're going to be successful and you're going to look back, you're going to see that actually 70% uh, of things what you've done is it was wrong. And um, actually, that things what made you've made you wrong guided you to the right path. So only only you can be successful. I mean, this is my my theory. Only you can be successful by by learning from mistakes and making mistakes because uh, no one knows what's the right path. Otherwise, everyone will be successful, which is not the case. Learning from a mistake definitely is one thing. What uh, what uh, makes me keep going and, uh, and makes me positive, even if uh, if we um, if I if I made a really mistake. And I recently moved to a a, a um, smaller company. And uh, their main business is helping international students to get into uh, universities abroad. Uh, currently, they mainly focus on uh, China, so uh, China and UK. So I would say 90% of the students uh, who are uh, referred to universities and get onto universities are from China, and they study in the UK. Um, this business actually has uh, many aspects I like. Uh, one is uh, helping students, basically, or services for free for them. Um, uh, second is um, working with students, because you know they are the next generation of uh, uh, internet users. So just understanding uh, what inspires them, what, what they like, uh, what features they like, uh, uh, we can have a better understanding what products to offer them in two or three years. 
imagine they are 18 years old, you know, and uh, um, when they turn 25, they're going to be the uh, the most targeted uh, uh, on, uh, online uh, users. And understanding what motivates them, I could actually predict what's going to happen in five years, what type of products are going to be needed uh, for this uh, type of customers. Uh, at the same time, uh, I also like uh, the um, the geography uh, we work with, uh, China. Um, the company I, I joined is actually a Chinese company. And um, I'm a second one Chinese in, in, in the company. And they would like to go international. And what I do, I help them to uh, to move from offline, offline processes to online processes, introducing CRM system technology to make the the, their day-on-day -day pro uh, projects uh, and, and uh, activities more efficient, more uh, productive, and uh, create a great foundation uh, for going international. Uh, but uh, you have to learn that uh, helping a Chinese, a Chinese company to go international is not easy because of cultural differences. Uh, for example, one of the issues we have is that uh, they would like to go international, but uh, they still keep hiring uh, people from China. Uh, so if you want to go international, you need to have international team. At the same time, you know, you cannot just say that, okay, we are going to uh, um, hire just international people. We have to have a, a change strategy, which is quite challenging. Uh, but if I can make it work, we can have, if I can have this company to, you know, to become successful, um, uh, probably, um, you know, I'm going to have a, a certain knowledge uh, what I can use to help other Chinese companies as well in the future. So I would say it's very, very challenging. Uh, the area uh, of the business is great, uh, helping students. Um, uh, understanding uh, um, students, many Chinese students' expectations, behavior, and, uh, and, um, and understanding how to make a Chinese company uh, international. I think this is, uh, this is uh, not an experience what you can get anywhere. And I think I was lucky that I got the opportunity to to uh, come on board as a uh, CPO and uh, and help to form the company. Um, I'm not sure, as I said, uh, uh, you cannot be 100% sure if it's going to work out. So uh, uh, on my web, I'm going to do my best to, to make it uh, make it happen, make it work. So that's uh, from you can see why I'm excited now. <laughs> uh, right after this uh, role at uh, the computer training center, I joined a startup uh, where. The CEO was called, was called Andre Dobrynin. Uh, he, what you need to know about Andre that he's um, he's um, younger than me, and he sought his first uh, online business when he was 18, and he's from Russia. And he was the person who taught me everything about uh, about online, about online marketing, uh, uh, customer service, uh, moderation. Uh, SEO um, about uh, choosing the right team, training them, motivating them, and I, I learned I learned a lot from him. And he gave me a really good foundation for uh, becoming a good online product manager. And he's still my friend. He's running uh, uh, his own business, uh, and uh, he, and actually he managed uh, to make that business successful. And we saw the business uh, after four years. Um, he was one of the person who actually. Uh, help me to become a better product manager, under, better understand uh, what's online, what's right, and what's wrong. And that time it was just few people who actually understood uh, online and understood uh, how can you create a successful product uh, uh, online. Other person I would mention is uh, is actually my my recent line manager, Andrew Hooks uh, at uh, uh, Gumtree eBay, and he he was my line manager for for a year, and. Um, he, he is actually, he's not even manager, he's a leader. And uh, I learned from him what's different between a uh, manager and a leader. Um, and it's mainly the way he motivates people, the, the way he's thinking. I had uh, so many strategic uh, uh, sessions, brainstorming sessions just uh, uh, with him. And I, I was so surprised when I was, uh, when I could see uh, the way he's thinking in terms of product, in terms of the future of the company. Um, Honestly, I learned a lot uh, because till then I would say I was I was I was living in the now, and I was uh, trying to make the product uh, better for current customers. But since I was working with him, I, I realized that uh, that's not right because we had to think about the uh, future. We had to look at you know one year, two years, five years strategy, 
uh, look at uh, the industry, gain uh, more knowledge. Uh, of course, I've done it before, but I was mainly trying to shape the current product uh, and not looking at how to shape the future product. And um, he helped me to think uh, um, company-wide, not just make the product better, but made the company better via the product. Uh, and that's why I would say, you know, he, he's, he's another person who's really inspiring me uh, in terms of leadership and, uh, and strategic uh, uh, management. Other than that, everyone actually I've worked with, uh, my, uh, my, my friends, my family, you know, everyone has a big impact on me because I normally ask them about new features I would try to launch or new products uh, we are working on, ask their feedback. And uh, learning how they think actually uh, make me, made me change as well. What, what I, I learned previously is that um, imagine if you are the best product manager uh, on the world, you know, you are so talented uh, uh, that uh, you can predict the future, you know what people like and, and stuff. But to make the product come live, you know, you need a team. And actually it's in line with my previous comment about hiring the right team, the right people. So even if you are the best product person on the world, you need a good team to make the product come true. Maybe you have a vision about the product, but you need to have a good uh, uh, development team to write the code uh, the right way, make, being, to make it scalable, let's say. You need good designers and, and uh, UX, you know, uh, UX people who can help you to shape, make the product uh, more user-friendly. You need good marketers. To, to be able to market it, uh, you know, uh, the right way, so people are going to be interested. You need a good customer support team because uh, if you have a great product uh, but your customer su support uh, doesn't work, people are going to leave. You need also a good legal team, so if any issue comes up, uh, you know, uh, they can protect you. Um, you need content management team, you know, to, to manage uh, come up with the right content. You need uh, people, you know, managing your social media strategy. Um, I would say, you as a product manager, you are just a very tiny thing, you know, in, in a big ecosystem of product uh, development and product launch. And you have to, what may be effective is that I understood that I am just, I'm just uh, something very small. And if I want to be better, I have to be able to work with uh, all the teams together. And... Um, if, for example, the marketing team doesn't understand uh, my vision or the product vision or what, what to try to do, what is, who is your target customer, they won't be able to um, create an effective marketing campaign. So you have to work with them. You have to work with the customer support team. We have to work with uh, everyone. So, for example, if you want to get feedback from, on your product very quickly, uh, the best team to work, go after is the customer support team. So they should be you know, sitting next to you. Or maybe you should go and answer, you know, some some course to learn about uh, what what issues customers have, and uh, and making sure, let's say, the, the the development team understand the business. So, for example, I prefer working with developers who ask why why do we do that? Why do we need this feature? So I can explain them that uh, we are going to actually make um, um, hundred thousand uh, uh, pounds more uh, next month, and they're going to ask how do you going to do that? Uh, how, and, and I explain them the business, and just because they're interested in the business, they're interested in how it works. They can actually cre they can actually code it better. They can make it better. And um, and the next week, you know, or next month, uh, when uh, you know we're gonna sit down and and uh, meet and talk, uh, they might ask. Uh, so have you seen this increase, you know, uh, in the revenue? And I said yes, of course. Can you see this hundred k came because of you? You made it uh, 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 real. You, you made it, you know, happen because you've done your coding the right way. So, uh, and again, you can motivate them. So, hiring the right team, you know, learning that uh, it's not you who makes the product come alive. It's just uh, one, uh, maybe one gear in the whole engine. Maybe it's it's the most important gear, but um, you know, engine with one gear it doesn't work. You need, you know, need the whole thing uh, work together. And um, probably that's what makes me more effective product manager. So imagine if you have three goals, and um, you might pick the, the goal what you like the most, but it's not uh, the most uh, important for your career. So for example, I would say, I like networking, so I'm going to put it as priority. But actually, I might need to improve my communication skills. Uh, but uh, because I, I, I like that the least, um, I'm going to prioritize it least. 
so just so you know, if you are honest with yourself, if you if you can find out what is your weakness, uh, weaknesses, what are your weaknesses, and um, what you need to work on uh, to get that where you want to be, uh, that can really help. Uh, for example, uh, Andrew Hooks, my manager, told me that I'm, I'm very self-aware because um, I, I actually taught him when we had uh, the um, uh, yearly um, review, personal development review, I actually taught him everything, like what I learned, what I think, where I'm, 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 uh, I'm, uh, what are my weaknesses, uh, what I should improve next. And he had no job to do. Uh, so if you if you're honest with yourself, if you don't try to hide your weaknesses, but uh, try to uh, explore how can you make your weaknesses actually your for your advantage. So for example, if you know that you are not a great communicator, then try to hire someone in your team who actually can do do that type of work. Or if you are not good at design, uh, then don't try to design something yourself. Or if you want to improve your skills, then just uh, Take a take a course and and um, and and learn learn you know uh, about design. That's why probably uh, I took MBA because I knew that one of my weaknesses is business. I need to learn about finance, accounting. I need to learn about economics uh, and uh, uh, strategy. And um, you no, know, I would say I'm not saying that I'm going to be a financial expert, but actually I have a better understanding of that. Um, or for example, I know that I need to work on my communication skills, and I joined Toastmasters. Just to just to learn the skills, uh, that's a great platform where you can actually uh, become learn uh, how to communicate, how to present yourself better. Uh, that's why I would say, if you are honest with yourself, if you don't try to hide your weaknesses and strength, um, if you set uh, uh, goals for yourself and uh, looking at your uh, current you know experience, knowledge, and skills, uh, you can find out uh, what you need to improve. Uh, you can use the time the most widely to achieve your goals. Well, I would I would suggest everyone that uh, they should um, they should be actually yourself. So you should understand who you are, what you like to do, and do what you like to do. Because if you actually work on something and do something what you don't like, you just waste your time, and time is precious. So n number one thing for me is that uh, if I decide to do something, I have to make sure that uh, that product, that company, uh, that strategy is actually right for me. Otherwise, uh, I would I would struggle to make it work. I would struggle to uh, to wake up in the morning and and be positive. What you need is is focus and be consistent and uh, uh, creating tasks and goals. You have to set goal for yourself. What you would like to achieve and. Uh, of course, uh, prioritization is not a new thing in the product management. Prioritization is key to everything. And uh, I would say, if you set goals, then you have some targets to achieve. Uh, that way, uh, you can you can make sure that on daily basis you can check if we actually go in the right way. Um, prioritizing these goals are again uh, very important because if you if you aim for the wrong thing, uh, you again you might waste time. One would be um, kill your ego. And actually, okay. um, I had a chat with uh, another uh, young product manager recently, and uh, I would advise him the same thing. Uh, what it means? It means that um, you are creating product for other people, not for yourself. So if you like a product, it doesn't mean that other people are going to like it. You always have to think about it from other people's perspective. And also, it's not your baby end of the day. It's it's a company's, and actually, it's going to become baby of the customers. You want to make sure that the product what you develop is, is uh, the consumers are going to use it, uh, are going to look at it as, as as their baby, and you should have them to you know have to create products uh, uh, which uh, they're gonna like. So uh, for me, that would be number one. Kill ego. It's not your product. It's not developing for yourself. Otherwise, you are going to end up developing. Uh, Companies, services, uh, products for yourself. Actually, it's it's very simple. You just ask other people advice. Uh, you ask, "Am I right? What do you think about it?" And ask, uh, let's say, two or three more people. Probably not your colleagues. Uh, for example, um, user-centered design really helped me to understand, you know, how to think from user's perspective. 
Uh, it's easy. You just walk to the street, you stop someone who you don't know, and ask a question. Very simple. And then you get another person's perspective. You can do user surveys. You can do user testing. You can do. Uh, you can even ask your uh, mother. You know uh, about her her, her uh, opinion on certain stuff. I mean, it might not not be relevant, but actually, it makes you think that there are also other people, not just you. And if you make this first step, you know, if you ask yourself, okay, I made the decision, but have I got any feedback from other people? And if you say no, uh, then probably have to should you should do something about that. Um, if you say yes, then uh, you are you are on the right, right path, and uh, you try to think not just from your, your perspective, but from others' perspective as well. I, I still think that um, he didn't develop it himself. He didn't develop you know, Apple and, and iPhone himself. He had a team. He got feedback from the team as well. There are people who are challenging him. There are people uh, who actually, uh, he went uh, for ask advice, not like, what should I do, but uh, how, do you, how do, you, do you like this product? I don't think they, they haven't done any user testing with, uh, with their products. They have done a lot. So you can do it a certain different way, you know. Uh, you know, it wasn't like Steve Jobs uh, uh, wake up, woke up one morning and uh, iPhone was created uh, from his mind, you know. Uh, he got to the stage where uh, he learned what, what customers want. And um, actually, one of his uh, um, strengths was that uh, he could influence people with, uh, with the product and design. So even if he would create a, a completely like, different uh, technology, it would be created such a way that people would start using it because uh, he was the design of this product. Uh, it was so influential. Um, I always say there are two types of product management. One is um, when you develop products for your current customers uh, or for your future trends. For example, you know that people are going to use mobile, more mobile in the future, so you create mobile platforms, and it's going to happen anyway. Another one is when you create a trend and you influence, you create a product or service that actually made people to change. Uh, who knows, someone might come up with technology and people would move from TV to that technology. I don't know if it's going to happen, but uh, that, that's another type of you know, uh, product uh, approach. At the same time, if you look at uh, Steve Jobs, he, would, he had so much experience in, in, in product design and development. He knew what makes people trigger, what triggers people. So he wasn't developing a product for himself. He was developing a product for the customers. Uh, so I don't think he was, he was a kind of egoist in terms of, you know, he wanted to make sure that, you know, the product is going to do best. But at the end of the day, he was developing a product for other people. So I don't think product-wise he was, uh, he had ego. <laughs> Hardest lesson what I learned, actually there are a couple of things. One is that um, you are, you cannot, not, you cannot not, you can never be 100% right. And also what I learned is that when you were wrong, you had to admit it. And you had to act on it. So for example, if you know that you were not right and you just hide it, uh, that's bad because it's going to come to the surface at one point, sooner or later. And it's going to be a, 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 um, a uh, Negative, it's going to have a negative impact on your career, on your, on your personal, and how people are going to accept you. But if you stand up and say, hi guys, I made a mistake, and I, expect, I would like to uh, um, correct it in such a way, people are going to trust you more, people are going to uh, respect you more. Uh, but you have to stand up, you know, and um, even if uh, it has got uh, huge consequences and, and uh, you might end up, uh, you know, being punished for that somehow, I don't know how, um, you should do it because you're going to feel better next day. Uh, people are going to respect you a long term and they're going to want to work with you because they're going to see that you are, again, not uh, uh, egoist and doing any way uh, things your way. One, one example what I would mention is that recently uh, I've done wrong is that uh, I hired someone who is not right for the job. And um, that's actually the, the, the worst thing uh, Whatever can happen to you because uh, you know you, you think that the person is right, uh, is going to join a company, is going to have the company, uh, you know, form the product. You're gonna have you're gonna be able to work on other other you know uh, area of the business, uh, and uh, it turns out that uh, you actually have to spend more time on product because you hired the wrong person. Uh, 
And what's next? What should you do? Should you keep this person on board? Should you train him? Uh, should you, you know, give him other tasks? It's a huge decision. But first, most important thing is to admit it. Uh, so, for example, I, I went after the CEO and told him that I made the wrong decision, uh, but I have a plan. So um, I created plan A and B, and the worst plan is basically uh, the last plan would be um, to, to replace this person. But um, still, I, I, I need to give a chance to this person to show how can he help to, to form the business. Um, but, but imagine if, if it, at this, at this uh, situation you don't admit it, and this person is still in the company, and still doing something what actually uh, he, can, he cannot or she cannot do. It just uh, make even more pressure on business. You lose time, you lose money, and uh, you won't be able to, you know, uh, make the business more successful. So um, I would say, you know, first of all, you can you can never, you can never be right. You can never be hundred percent right. Uh, admit it if you if you uh, did something wrong. Learn from it and uh, and create a plan how you're gonna correct it. That's that's probably the hardest hardest lesson I learned. Uh, what I like uh, the most is actually uh, in line what to, uh, in line with my um, personality of learning new stuff. So uh, nowadays, you know, technology, internet services are so fast changing. You know, there are so many uh, newcomers to the market who want to disrupt the the the, the industries, and uh, you have to keep up with them. Uh, you have to monitor them. You have to learn. Um, I just like learning, you know, every, uh, everyday new things. Uh, uh, sometimes I feel like there are so many things to learn, I just cannot catch up, I cannot handle it. So what I like is that uh, fast-changing uh, space, you know, uh, uh, fast-changing environments. Uh, another thing, what I like the least is that uh, um, I just cannot uh, stop and enjoy the present and, and uh, learn uh, everything or most of the things what's happening right now around me because um, what I feel like, uh, what I feel is that uh, sometimes I'm missing uh, some very important facts what uh, might help me to uh, create better products but uh, because you cannot learn everything you cannot be updated on everything uh, you have to make a, a decision from uh, what you uh, what you know so um, yeah learning new technology learning what's going out learning new business models uh, uh, learning about new way of uh, introduce, introducing product to market, uh, or, or learning about new markets as well. Uh, let's say China. Um, that really motivates me, and uh, what I like the most, and what I like the least is time. Time is just you know, it's it's um, time is something what uh, I would need more probably. I would rather work with uh, inspiring leaders, and uh, one person I would mention is. Uh, uh, Marisa Mayer, uh, who is actually um, the CEO of Yahoo, uh, just because she has uh, she has so much on her shoulder, and um, I think she she's a great uh, uh, leader, a great motivator. Um, she is a great strategic thinker. Um, she doesn't have an easy easy job now at the moment. She's not in an easy situation. She has to make tough calls, and probably one of the questions I would ask is about leadership. Uh, um, how can you be ready to make a tough call? For example, if you have to uh, close down a, a big business department and you have to, you know, let uh, X hundred people go, um, how do you deal with that? How do you prepare for that and, and, and stuff? So there are so many things I could learn. Uh, currently, I don't have experience, but I could learn from her. Or maybe just ask advice, uh, you know, uh, what to do at, at the situation. So in case in the future I'm going to, going to be in the same situation, um, I can uh, call back this experience and maybe uh, make it my own and um, come up with my strategy. So um, I think she would be one of the one of the, uh, uh, the people I would like to you know maybe spend the day with and ask sort of questions and um, and learn from. What I would ask from her, it's I would I would I would ask about um, tough decisions. For ex for example, you know. How do you know when to uh, make call? So, for example, someone that doesn't perform in your team, or let's say a department doesn't perform a team in her case, um, at what point you know you should uh, make a call? What information would you look for, and uh, how would you deal with it? And um, 
probably you have to you have to think about the business. You cannot put emotions in, in it, but uh, you deal with people. You know, uh, you make decisions about uh, other people's lives, and uh, it's not easy. And uh, she has to handle it, this as well. So uh, she, end of the day, she she's another person. You know, she's uh, she's not a robot. She has emotions, and um, of course, you know, um, making a big decision can have big impact on her as well. And she has to deal with it as well. Probably I would I would explore that area. And um, another one would be probably around leadership. Um, how how does she motivate other people? And um, uh, and yeah, probably this this would be the two things I would ask now. I believe in two type of product management. One is uh, being able to uh, create a product for the future. Look at uh, what's happening now. Uh, let's say students are using technology in a different way, and think about uh, what's going to be a trend in five years, and try to create a product. Uh, you know, try to understand what's going to be a trend. Uh, try to um, and try to create product for the future. For example, imagine if you're going to launch a product from scratch. You might need, you know, half a year research. Then you need to put the team together. You might be able to release that product in two years. So if you look at the current stats and data, you know, your product might not be even, you know, needed in two years because uh, uh, everything might change uh, uh, that time. Uh, that's why, if you would like to make sure that uh, whatever you worked on, or if there is a product what you might need to launch, uh, you know, in 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 a year or so or two years, we have to make sure that. Uh, that's going to be ready uh, and needed that time. Don't create something for the now, create something for the future. Uh, another one, uh, if you can learn how to uh, influence people. So for example, um, I think that's something was difficult to learn. Uh, but uh, still, you might be able to get some skills about uh, um, creating products and learn how to influence people the way you, let's say, communicate uh, what this product for, the way you develop this product. Um, for example, what I mean is that uh, you might launch a product which has, uh, you know, hundreds of other competitors uh, doing the same thing, but you might do it a uh, different way, such a way that uh, people would love your product more and uh, they would change. So you actually influence people such a way that you change, you change their behavior and their expectations. Actually, I was talking about consumers, influence consumers, um, but um, influencing you know a company and and uh, your team that's definitely a must. Uh, help them to be up up to date to the market. But I would rather say uh, try to learn how you can influence your consumers, your potential customers, um, how you can show that your product is different. Maybe just open their eyes up and they uh, and show them that uh, that is. It's possible to create a better product than they are using right now. There is a, a you know you can you can launch a better phone, you can launch a better um, let's say um, um, chat application. Uh, who knows? Uh, it's very difficult to learn how to do that. Uh, there is no uh, straightforward answer how to influence and change uh, your cons consumer's behavior. But only way you can do that is with uh, with great experience. I would also think leadership plays a key, key role in uh, every product management uh, manager's role in, uh, in the future, uh, just because uh, I believe that uh, uh, more and more product managers, good product managers, are going to become CEOs. Uh, because uh, product managers uh, usually have an understanding of whole product. Uh, they know about the consumer, they, know, they work with uh, you know, other departments, and these people are the best people for being uh, CEOs. And being a CEO, it's not enough to be a good product manager. You have to be a good leader as well. And uh, you have to be a good communicator. And uh, sometimes, you know, some product managers might be able to, you know, uh, um, motivate their teams, but uh, might not be able to uh, actually um, go public, talking in front of uh, uh, many people, uh, talk about the product, about their vision. And that actually you know, learning how to do that, how to be a good leader, uh, can really help them. And actually, what what trend I also see that uh, um, people don't just you know start use product because uh, they 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 see it's it's a it's a great icon and then it's easy to use. But um, 
if they, let's say they look at uh, TED, they look at other conferences, they go and uh, and uh, see someone to speak about product. Uh, uh, like let's say just uh, watching a video about uh, uh, a CEO talking about the product and 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 seeing that this person is uh, is really you know um, excited and inspiring and and uh, um, could make people start using the product and and could make people to uh, to like the product. So that's I would say this is another marketing tool you can use, but uh, it's you, if you use it as a marketing tool, probably it's, it's a bad strategy. You should use it as inspiring, you know, uh, your audience, inspire your team, and um, and uh, make people believe in in you, not just uh, in your products. So if you would ask this question two three years ago, I, I would talk about uh, continuous integration, continuous deployment, you know. Uh, um, all this stuff, uh, lean uh, product development, um, which actually uh, had a big positive impact on this industry. We can develop codes faster, better, you know, uh, easier, uh, which had a positive and negative impact on on product development. Because um, even if you can write code fast, uh, you need time for design. You need time for uh, user testing experience. And sometimes, you know, businesses, uh, because businesses learn that, they can make changes every day. They, you know, you created a platform where you can uh, release code changes uh, uh, 20 times a day because uh, the system makes it happen. Uh, they expect you to do that, but uh, they forget about user experience and design. So um, I would say the next big trend is, uh, is being more user-centric. Uh, look at... Uh, um, um, service design, for example. Uh, recently, I came across this this term, service design, and uh, during my MBA studies, actually, I ended up uh, working with uh, some service design students. And uh, what they look at is is uh, they are not just designers; they just actually they design the whole service for your company. Uh, what they do, they look at uh, who are your customers, what motivates them, the touch points uh, these customers have with your product. Uh, in comparing UX designers and service designers is that UX are mainly look at uh, uh, your application, mobile application, uh, user interface. But service designers, they look at your customer support team, they look at your emails, they look at your uh, company, PR, marketing. They look at all the touch points uh, you know, uh, your company is going to have with your customers. Maybe they're going to look at your, your uh, reception as well because customer might walk into your center. And they try to you know help you to make uh, form the, your your uh, uh, company your product uh, the best for your customers. Um, so that's that's something uh, what I quite like. Uh, for example, they help you to shape your uh, value proposition, your uh, your uh, let's say if you have a, a company motto or slogan, um, your goals. Uh, is it in line with uh, you know with your target customers? Um, they, they take uh, user testing, uh, feedback from users, um, uh, personas to the next level, and they think not just about the product perspective, but the company perspective. So uh, I would say you still have to you know, uh, make sure that uh, um, design, UX design, uh, usability testing is involved in your product. But uh, for the future, you have to uh, take it to the next level. You have to look at your whole, whole company. So, for example, if your product is um, targeting students and have certain uh, uh, voice tone or tone of language, actually, when when a customer calls up the customer uh, center, are they going to have the same experience on the phone than what they have on the website? When they receive an email, is the tone of voice the same, you know, or is completely different? When they walk into your office and talk to you, is it going to be the same? Or not. It also in line with uh, company culture. So, um, because uh, I guess I would say uh, the service designers can not just shape your company, but also your company culture to create the right culture, your right mindset, helping you to hire the right type of people for your company, for your product, and and make it make it successful. The continuous deployment and integration uh, became a bit uh, negative. I'm not saying it's it's bad, but um, um, you shouldn't push it. You know, continuous deployment integration doesn't work uh, it, it, it alone. If you if you push it uh, further, uh, you might release uh, bad products faster. 
in terms of negative trend, other negative trends, like what's going, what's disappearing from uh, the market. Um, actually, there are many things. I hope, I hope that waterfall is disappearing, uh, but uh, you still need it for certain uh, uh, projects like uh, you know uh, banking. But hopefully, uh, you know that there, there is a new uh, product on a more edge. Uh, you know process come up for banks as well, so they can handle better. Oh, it's really hard to say. Um, I would say it's going to be more and more uh, difficult to be a good product manager because of uh, uh, changing technology, changing user expectations, behavior, uh, competition. Uh, there are going to be so many competitors coming to the market you know, with uh, disruptive new technology. Um, and that's why it's going to be more and more important to be more user-centric and be able to uh, create product not just a specific type of customer but to, to create something for a, a, a broader uh, uh, population, let's say. And uh, if, if you look at what's in common in most of the people is, is simplicity. So because everyone likes uh, simple stuff, easy-to-use stuff. So being able to you know create products which are simple, easy to use, you know using latest technology, maybe voice recognition, maybe I'm not going to use you know right now using the phone uh, with your finger, maybe you won't even do it in the future. Maybe you are going to control it with your mind. I don't know, uh, or voice, uh, maybe gestures. You know, uh, be up to date with the technology and uh, and find out uh, how can we use technology for the consumer's benefit. Because that's how you're going to be able to create great products only. Um, it's not an easy job. It's very difficult, you know. Um, difficult to see, you know, um, what product managers going to need to do, you know, in five years, or how they're going to, what skills they're going to need to have. Uh, but if they are open-minded, uh, they think about the customer, they they look at trends, they build a great team. Um, then they should be able to, you know, uh, be very, very successful and and and, and create successful businesses. I would say you're going to have more pressure on you. You're going to be able, you have to make more decision faster. So, for example, you know, um, you won't be able to um, wait a couple of months, you know, or I'd say uh, one or two weeks on uh, on uh, on user testing. So you're going to have to find tools which can give you, which can help you to make decision uh, in an hour, in two hours. Because you're going to have to make decisions on so many different things. Um, you are going to look for the tools who can help, which can actually help you to make the right decision. I mean, it's already happening. You are basically, if you are looking at user testing, you can user test hundred different ways. There are user testing tools which you know might need a week or two to get back feedback. There are different tools which you can get feedback uh, in in an hour or or so. I think the the, the product manager of the future should uh, should learn uh, how to which tools can give you back uh, more accurate uh, information the fastest um, and um, and and learn how to make. Uh, the right decision very quickly, even if you don't have the full picture, and uh, learning how to ask the right question. So sometimes, let's say you are doing um, a brainstorming session on who is your customer and, and so on. Um, if you miss that step, you might, uh, you know, uh, not be able to ask the right question. Um, but again, uh, you might not have two or three days to run this test. So. Or what you can do to get a reasonable, you know, information in very limited time, uh, what actually can help you to make a decision quickly, quick, more quicker. Information overloading, that's going to happen as well. You know, you're going to have uh, so many experts out there who know what they do, and everyone is going to tell you different things. That how you're going to make decision. Again, it's already happening. Uh, if you look at how many technology you can use now, uh, and um, how many different ways you can implement a solution. That's gonna be like you're gonna have like five times more solutions in the future, or maybe no, maybe I'm wrong because some are going to die. But uh, imagine if it happens, uh, you know, uh, technology uh, like programming is going to be so easy to do. There are gonna be so many experts out there, different you know tools you can use. Um, how you're gonna be able to make decision uh, was the right tool for yourself, and um, and uh, so you can make the right decision.